Welcome to Political Junkies. I'm Jesse Smith. And I'm William Beck. We've got a great show for you today. First and foremost, we got to talk about neocon Nikki getting involved in the presidential race to run against former President Trump for the Republican nomination. Absolutely. It's very interesting. Nikki Haley has decided to throw her hat in the ring. We don't have one of her hats here. We don't want them anyway. We, won't, we wouldn't want one. Uh, so yeah, let's let's just get right into it. Um, let's. I just want to give you guys a quick recap of the 2024 presidential race up to this point. Uh, as you know, President Trump got involved pretty early on last November, and everyone's kind of been chomping at the bit to see, well, who's the next one who's going to announce their run against him? And of course, February 14th, Valentine's Day, it was Nikki Haley. We actually thought that she would be announcing today. Right, she had put that everywhere. She said that she was going to announce on the 15th, but she had to had to shoot early and decided to do it. And your and your boy Donald Trump um, was kind of encouraging her to get involved in the race. <laughs> That's right. Donald Trump told her to follow her heart. Go ahead, follow your heart, Nikki, and your heart is taking you straight to uh, straight to defeat. Mm -hmm. We'll see about that. Uh, also, planning a run for the presidency includes. Florida Governor Ron DeSantis, as you can see, he is my guy as of now, if he gets involved. Yeah, roll your eyes all you want. We also have conservative radio host Larry Elder, who I also actually like. He ran for governor of California for, during the recall election. Uh, then we have Rhino Governor Asa Hutchinson. If you've never heard his name before, don't worry. I never heard of it before he announced that he was running, but he was actually one of the Rhino governors who vetoed the ban on transgender sports in Arkansas. We also have Rhino Secretary of State Mike Pompeo, who's planning to run. And then, of course, we have the usual suspects, John Bolton, Liz Cheney. The Liz goes on and on. But that's not what we're here to talk about. Let's talk about Neocon Nikki. What's her deal? Yeah, absolutely. So the old uh, governor of South Carolina, she was the U.N. ambassador before getting the boot from Donald Trump. Yeah, Trump's... Uh, uh, UN ambassador, by the way. Yeah, absolutely. She was uh, under, did she come under on, the Trump administration. Did Trump hire her at the same time as John Bolton, or was that a different? Oh, I have no idea. Okay, but he did hire John Bolton. He hired Nikki Haley. He hired Mike Pompeo. What are you trying to the get list, at here? The, the, oh, we just got a long list of rhinos uh, coming from his yep, administration. And now That's they're all. all looking to challenge him. So it's, it doesn't look like they're too good of friends anymore. And it's because Trump has continued to stand against the swamp. He's had some people get in the way in the meantime. Mm -hmm. But uh, he's a fighter for uh, the American people. That's what we want to see. No more career politicians. No more career politicians. I agree with you there. So speaking of career politicians, let's just tell people about Nikki's career, neocon Nikki. She is not any kind of electoral juggernaut, uh, as she claims in this video, which we will be watching in a minute here. Uh, she won her 2010 gubernatorial race by a measly four percentage points. Uh, this was the Tea Party year, it was, and this is South Carolina too, a ruby red state. So don't be fooled, uh, just because she's a woman and a woman of color, by the way, that doesn't give her any kind of electoral advantage. Uh, did, did you want to watch that video now? Or yeah, absolutely. Let's check out what uh, Nikki Haley had to say in her campaign announcement video here. The railroad tracks divided the town by race. I was the proud daughter of Indian immigrants. Not black, not white. I was different. But my mom would always say your job is not to focus on the differences, but the similarities. And my parents reminded me and my siblings every day how blessed we were to live in America. The socialist left sees an opportunity to rewrite history. China and Russia are on the march. They all think we can be bullied, kicked around. You should know this about me. I don't put up with bullies. And when you kick back, it hurts them more if you're wearing heels. I'm Nikki Haley, and I'm running for president. She almost got my vote. If she were more interesting and had any kind of anything to run on. Oh, you mean you weren't inspired with that, William? You didn't <sighs> you didn't think that she was the next leader of our great country? I mean, her monotone voice throughout the whole video didn't quite get me. I'm not <laughs> gonna lie. Um, she is quite robotic. You know, I was thinking as I was watching it, it's like you could have uh, plugged 
into an AI generator. You could have <laughs> said, give me a generic Republican, give mm. me someone who doesn't stand for anything, give me a neocon, a woman of color, and that's exactly what they generated out with that commercial. It doesn't inspire anybody is the most milk toast establishment thing I've ever seen in my life. Yeah, it's just strange to me how they're propping up Nikki Haley to be the main Trump con uh, opponent. I mean, if Ron DeSantis doesn't get in, I, I don't know what I'm going to do. Because Ron DeSantis is my guy. He's been a conservative crusader in the state of Florida. Uh, Supposedly. Oh, well, we could talk about Trump's record, <laughs> too, if you really want to go there. And we could also talk about Ron DeSantis, a.k.a. Meatball Ron, I like Meatball a.k.a. Ron uh, better than, uh, Rontanamo Bay. <laughs> there, there's plenty plenty to say on that guy there, but, uh, you know, he's still keeping quiet on whether he wants to run or not. Uh, he should probably fulfill his uh, duty as the governor and finish the job. We'll see if he decides to end to, uh, to ultimately do that. I'm skeptical. Yeah, I mean, I mean going back to Nikki Haley, I, I, I'll take those shots right now. We'll come back to it because I got a lot more to fire back. Um, Nikki Haley has got to be banking on a vice presidential nomination at this point because she's seen the polls right there's no way she hasn't and she knows that she's getting one to seven percent i believe if you look at the aggregate of polls from real real clear politics um trump's coming in at 47 percent of the electorate uh, ron DeSantis comes in second with 30 percent mike pence comes in last with uh, 7%, and then everyone else, you know, it's kind of one, two, three, who really cares? Mm -hmm. Notice Nikki Haley isn't in the top three. So it really seems to me the reason that Trump told neocon Nikki that she could run is so that she splits the vote of the anti-Trump coalition. She takes votes away from Ron DeSantis. And, and she will. And, and she might take a few votes away. I still think he has a chance. Uh, I, I very well could see a bunch of these candidates dropping out before Iowa or New Hampshire and getting behind one or the other. Mm -hmm. um, it, it definitely seems like some sort of power play here. Right, and, but and nowadays you don't have to have a grassroots army that actually supports you to run a campaign. All you have to have is a billionaire or two that wants to fund you. And that's what Nikki Haley's got. She's got Paul Singer who is funding her campaign and all he cares about is CRT, Israel, and financial regulation. So. She is going to be that perfect corporate capitalist. She's going to be that perfect crony capitalist for uh, these billionaires that are funding her. So she's uh, completely tied to her lobbyist and special interest career politician. Well, don't dismiss the CRT issue, though, um, because that's actually a red meat issue for a lot of these Republican primary voters. And that's why DeSantis has kind of become this alternative to Trump, because he's been so good on this issue in Florida. He's been good on CRT, uh, holding schools accountable, uh, standing up to woke companies like Disney. He, mm -hmm. He's just great. Um, I think we need, if he can bring that to the White House, uh, I'm sold. Right. Well, it's unfortunate, but he's not going to. But uh, Nikki Haley, she had al also said that she was never going to run against her boss, Donald Trump. She said that she would never run against until, Donald Trump. Until I, I genuinely think that she's going to be the next vice president. I'm sure they concocted this plot. Trump said, Neocon Nikki, I want you as my running mate. You're a woman of color. That's very important to me. We're Trump already said done. that he's not interested in her. So uh, it's interesting that you think that that's what's going to happen. I, think I it's really happen. don't see that happening. Right. And uh, a couple other things about that video. I thought it was uh, very funny that she's using this argument for new blood, that it's uh, as if because she's younger than Trump, that she's going to be a better candidate. She talks about generational change in leadership. It doesn't matter what your age is. What matters is your policies, your principles, your values. Unless you're Joe Biden. I of course. Well, if you have dementia, <laughs> that, that's when age matters. But. And look, look, Trump's getting pretty old himself. I understand her argument and where she's coming from. I think younger people um, are needed in politics. Uh, Ron DeSantis, for example, he's, what, 41, 42? But uh, that, that plug aside, uh, Trump's also getting up there in age. He's, what, 76, I want to say, something sure. like that? And he looks like he's younger than DeSantis. He acts like he's younger than DeSantis. And okay, uh, you know he's got a lot true. of energy. It's pretty entertaining. And we'll, we'll see what ends up happening with mm -hmm. Nikki Haley. Obviously, she has no chance. We understand that already. But uh, it's interesting that she has decided to get into this race. 
Yeah, let's talk about some of these other candidates that are maybe going to get involved. I know you had one in mind particularly. Absolutely. Chris Sununu, who is the governor of uh, New Hampshire, is also considering a run for president. As we were just talking about with Nikki Haley, uh, it is very important that she's getting involved uh, this early because South Carolina is one of the early states for the election in this primary. Yeah, I think it's third or fourth, right. maybe, something like that. So that's obviously going to play a big factor in South Carolina, especially mm -hmm. if Senator Tim Scott, also from South Carolina, decides to enter the race, and that looks very likely. Okay, but Chris. So oh, sure, sorry. go ahead. No, I was, yeah, I was just going to turn it back to Chris Sununu, but it mm -hmm. sounded like you're also going back yep, to Chris Yep, absolutely. Sununu. And New Hampshire going to be the second primary of this. Iowa first, New Hampshire second. And if uh, Chris Sununu wants to get involved in the uh, presidential race, that will definitely throw a wrench in the DeSantis camp uh, as he will be detracting the non-Trump votes, which will be very interesting. But Chris Sununu, this governor, he's out there saying that we don't need a fighter as the president. What we need is a conservative manager. That is the last thing we need right now. We have an establishment and globalists who are against the American people. They're against humanity. They're against free will. They are against our freedom. They do not want the American people to live free lives and live the lives that we want to. Uh, we can't allow this establishment to continue like this. They are socialist communists. We can't allow it these Marxists. Yep. So what we need to do is we need a fighter back in the White House. Chris Sununu, if he is already caving he will definitely not do a good job as president. Yeah, there's a, there's a word that you didn't say there that I think it's important. I genuinely think that this agenda that they're pushing is evil. Mm -hmm. These socialist, Marxist, communist type people Absolutely. are pushing an evil agenda. They want abortion up into birth, in some cases after birth. They want to indoctrinate your children to hate themselves, and they want to take more of your hard-earned cash. They want mm -hmm. you to own nothing, and they want you to be happy with that. Mm -hmm. Well, we gotta put this to an end right now. You can't just be someone passively allowing this stuff to happen, like mm -hmm. a conservative manager. Yep. I, I mean, look, I had, Chris Sununu's fine for the state of New Hampshire. It's not exactly a conservative Republican state. I'll pass on him being our Republican nominee for mm -hmm. president. And actually, he just launched a political action committee called Live Free or Die, and it's, it's a great name, but that unfortunately, name. what it really is, is him taking big corporate money. He is beholden to the special interests and lobbyists. That's why I like Trump so much. He's not beholden to any of that. He doesn't need anybody's money. And Ron DeSantis, once he gets into the race, he is going to need a lot of money to be able to pull off uh, any type of chance. You know, the idea of beating Donald Trump when the majority of the people already support him and the majority of De, uh, DeSantis supporters, if DeSantis is not in that race, who are they voting for? Donald Trump. I will say that I'm proud as a DeSantis supporter myself here. Um, Donald Trump is probably my second choice, either him or like Glenn Youngkin or somebody. Um, I, I mean, I'm certainly not settling for the likes of Nikki Haley, uh, Liz Cheney, John Bolton, anybody like that. No, um, I, I have a good feeling that Republicans will be united when it comes time to face off against Joe Biden, because that's what we have to do. I mean, if we don't manage this right, Joe Biden could easily win a second term. So it's too early to see what, what's happening right now, but uh, we'll be here to bring you all the best political coverage that we can of the 2024 presidential election. Absolutely. Uh, we, we look forward to doing it. This is Political Junkies. This is Jesse Smith and William Beck. We're signing off. Thank you guys very much.